March 31st, 2019. Guys, I've had a lot of questions about the solar setup that I've been talking about on several videos. And I, I want to kind of go through the construction of it. I'll do more detailed videos about wiring and things like that. But what you're looking at here is I've taken a corner out of my office and uh, taken the sheetrock out, sheet out of the wall you see there. And instead of the um, fiberglass insulation that you normally see, this is uh, the R-Max. So that what that does is go against the wall. You don't have, Once you start running your wiring in there, you don't have that uh, insulation. Guys uh, hampering you and getting everywhere. So this will do fine on this wall. And uh, you see I've already started running some wiring at this point. What it is, I've, again, the wall that you're looking at that's open will be wood all the way to the ceiling. Except there will be a door, which will be wood also, but there will be a door that will open to the top part of this wiring panel for access. And this is just basic construction, guys, two by fours, uh, plywood. If you notice in the bottom, the reason there's a, one of the reasons is there's a desk there, and I'll show you the finished uh, product, is there's going to be battery storage in the bottom of the desk. There's going to be a door there and, um, two DC fans like you see on the back of a computer, one pulling in and one pulling out to the outside wall to vent the batteries or the battery compartment under the desk because you're going to have some fumes. Now, if you want to put them outside, you can, but cold weather is the most destructive thing to batteries. And I uh, will take a little closer look at that. Again, basic construction, nothing fancy. I just am going to be mounting things on this wall, some controllers and things that I don't want to mount to the sheetrock. Now, when this is finished on the bottom, there will be six batteries. Now, these are not these high-dollar gel batteries. They're pretty expensive. These are $50 Walmart batteries. They have an excellent warranty, excellent trade-out policy, things like that. And uh, they are, again, about 50 bucks a piece instead of 200 So this compartment will hold six. If I need more than that, which I may, I can put a shelf above it and above those batteries and put six more. And some places you'll have a much larger bank than that. But uh, I'm going to be running 10 solar panels, which is one kilowatt or 1,000 watts, and a 3,000 watt minimum pure sine wave inverter which i'll show you with a 9000 watt peak and just a closer look again i've got them uh the batteries up off the floor notice the shelf and you can see where the nails are there's two by four ribbing going under here because the batteries are heavy think about that so this needs to be strong and on the wall the, to the left is the outer wall of this room and that will be where the two 12 volt uh, DC fans will be exchanging air. Now, these are 100 watt panels. I have 10 of them. Notice I have two out of the box. Um, you can get these in like a 3x4 or 2x5 and about $100 a panel, guys, and that's a tremendous savings compared to what they used to be. Uh, the first 5 watt panel I ever bought for a sailboat was $100. And again, these are 100 watt panels. And I, these, that's what's in these boxes stacked up behind here. But I've got one out to show you. And these are, they're again, 100 poly panels. And uh, you can get them at various locations um, for around $100 or $105 bucks at uh, Home Depot. Now, I think you have to order it. They don't keep them in the store. There's different suppliers, but uh, Home Depot is a reliable shipper. And you do have options if you have problems because they're going to hold up. But again, I have these stored. They are not going outside until I need them. My, I have a small home here. It's very efficient. Uh, electricity works well. doesn't cost me that much. But I don't want my panels exposed to the weather or an EMP and, uh, unless it's needed. Now, if we have another hurricane like Katrina where we were out without power or water for two weeks, they will be rolled out. But I'll, after we get our power back on, I will, again, restore them because of you got hail damage that you can have and just the wear and tear. But these, they have, these are long-life panels. 
Now in this one, I'm a little further along, you can see that this wall now is wood all the way to the top. I want it to be able to hold weight. Again, this section of this opening will be a door for wiring access. The, I've noticed I've added a shelf with a four foot LED light under there. That can be run off my inverter and it's very efficient. And uh, Christian, if you're looking, this is the tr uh, the uh, flag you sent me to take to DC that you saw it hanging at the uh, biker uh, stage there in DC and you saw me uh, crossing the Appalachian Trail and up on Clingman's Dome with your flag. But it's home and it's safe just in case you notice. Uh, or we're wondering about that. But um, again, I put a shelf here. I'm going to show you some more close-ups. Now, I've got this piece on the front of the battery compartment just screwed in. I will eventually put these hinges on it. But what you're seeing here is on in my studio in the little house you've seen me um, work on before. This is some leftover flooring. And it's wood and it's tongue and groove and it's working out perfect to kind of give a finished surface for to it and again I had a couple of boxes left and that's what you're seeing here now here you're seeing uh, again the shelf you're seeing my main inverter right here we'll look at that closer I've uh, again just this is a kind of Walmart type shelving system and these parts were actually left over for when I put a closet in the bedroom I had this much left so they were there and you can see the wood works out very well going up the wall and in the behind this monitor which is part of my security system is the opening still with the door off. You're looking at an inverter here. You're looking at your uh, charger controllers here. Uh, again, we'll look at that closer. But I also notice that I use the wood going vertically instead of horizontally on the front door here and it dressed it out very nice. Now, I'm not going to get real technical in this video. I will do more about what I use the equipment that I have. But this is an Ames power inverter. This, these are in some of the upper class motor homes and boats things like that you get you can get them at different power levels now notice this one's 24 volt you can get a 12 volt one but your 24 volt system and you can wire your panels and your batteries from 12 volt into 24 volts is much more efficient it's going to last a lot longer again it's like going from 110 to 220 on a major air conditioner but it's an Ames power system this one uh, is at 3,000 watts, your average, but it peaks at 9,000. And you say, well, why would you want that? Because your compressors, and I've got this set up to run a 5,000 BTU or window unit in one room that you can stay cool in if you have a power outage or like we did with the hurricanes. But uh, the 9,000, guys, allows that surge for 30 seconds to come in and keep your compressor on for either the air conditioner or for your uh, smaller refrigerator, something that's efficient. And so you want that overhead because, again, you when you turn on your air conditioner, you'll first hear that compressor kick in. So And that's going to be up around five, 6,000 watts for a moment. So you don't want to limit yourself on your inverters. Now, there's they are becoming more and more um, affordable, but uh, the Ames is not cheap, but this one will run your home, guys. And let me say this, and I've mentioned it in my videos for the last couple of years, guys. Um, I am not wealthy by any means, but I've been for three or almost four years now prepping and saving and getting these components that I wanted to use. Again, here's some more information on it. Here is your model number of the one I'm using. They make larger ones, but this is the GLF 30W and your input power 24 volts DC. That's much more efficient. AC output, 120 volts. Perfect. And see, um, there are two different type of inverters. Now, for a starter system or something smaller, maybe a couple hundred watts, um, this Cobra, guys, I've never used it. I've had it. I ordered it first when I was just going to use a couple panels. But it's a 25 watt or 2500 watt with a 5000 watt peak. It's... Uh, Guys, it is a, a world of difference in this Ames and this one. And it, again, it's the ability to um, handle your loads like your compressors uh, on your air-conditioned refrigerator, things like that. The other thing, this one converts DC to AC, so does this one. This one is an 
an inverted sine wave. It's not a pure sine wave. To go to a pure sine wave, which is what you need for your delicate electronics like your, your tablets and computers, things like that, you need a pure sine wave. There's a difference. An inverted sine wave and a pure. So that's what this one is. This one also, guys, this blue aims. It has a built-in battery charger. So when you plug this into the wall, it, if you don't have enough sun that day or during the night, it has a built-in 24-volt battery charger to keep the battery bank that's under this desk charged. Not only that, it has a sensor system to where if your power goes off from your electrical grid, this will kick on like a generator right into your pull, uh, I mean, start pulling from your batteries into whatever outlets that you have assigned to your solar system. Now, on the wall above it, on the back wall, again, that's why I put the wood there, took the sheetrock out so I could do as much of this as I needed, including the shelving. But this is an MPPT solar charge controller. What will happen when it's all said and done, your solar panels on the outside will feed into this system. It will regulate the charge. In other words, you can burn up batteries if you don't stop the charge coming from the solar panels to the batteries once they're full. This will do that. It also does a few other things. It's a very smooth system. And on the right, which is optional now, it came in the kit when I ordered my uh, controller, the charger controller. And it's, you notice the extra wire that comes in, it all plugs in. And you can actually put your remote somewhere else. And this will give you control of your system. You can view it. It doesn't have to be real close to all the other main units. In other words, this other unit can be 20 feet away at the other end of the room or actually in another room if you wanted it like that. Say you had all of this out in your carport, but maybe you wanted the black box, which is kind of, it gives you a reading and some control over the entire system. It lets you know if it's charging properly, how much you're using. And so I, I, I'm going to, for the time being, I'm leaving everything right here. So that is uh, what you're looking at there, simply a remote for the system. All these components are critical. Now, there's certain type wiring that you can order. Or your panels come with dual plugs. We're going to get into that technical information uh, in another video, I just wanted to kind of go over the components. You're going to need your 100 watt panels or larger. And again, you can, the way that you hook those in series or parallel uh, along with your batteries will give you from 12 to 24 volts. Go 24 volts if possible. Now, the smaller Cobra here is a 12 volt inverter. You can just put it right on your battery of your car and change AC to DC if you notice. It's, uh, most, this one has a five volt USB output to charge all your other stuff. But again, if you're going to be serious about your home or something like your cabin or major camp or, or something like that, a project mini house, this aims will be worth the money. It's going to cost you, depending on which one you get, about like a, a gas generator that you would use. But again, it's not just a pure sine wave inverter, very powerful, but it's got the battery charger built in. Uh, and the re the uh, relay system that will switch to your panels if your home is down as far as your electrical grid. The uh, I think this unit was around $700 that I had to save up to get it. But guys, I knew that when it hit the fan, the smaller units like this Cobra, which is great for small things, it's not going to do what you want it to do. Now, one thing about solar panels, and you've got to realize this, are solar systems if you try to use an oven or a hot water heater or something like that, guys, it's going to drain your system down. It, heat is something you want to deal with differently. I have a wood-burning heater that I use in the winter anyway. Okay? You can also cook on it. Very inexpensive. It's an older one, but it works great. Also, there are solar water panels that you can build. Look it up on YouTube. and uh, Or, excuse me, solar water heaters. Very simple to build. Things that you can supplement your home with. There's solar heaters, things like that, guys. So this is one thing, and one of the um, things I'll be doing with it is running my ham radio, CB radios, things like that. Scanners, weather radios, got a marine um, radio here. So that's going to allow some communications. 
This sine wave inverter on the left will run your TVs, your computers, all of that, no problem. Again, central heat units going to be a problem unless you were going to you're going to go to a thirty thousand watt system or something like that, much larger. But you're looking with my panels and what I'm using here, probably close to three grand, and that includes uh, the fans I was talking about and a lot of wiring. Uh, to connect everything properly. A lot of little fuse uh, holders that I have that are going to go in place to where once these are all connected, there will be fuses that protect each component, each solar panel, and each one of these already have all of that. Everything's I've almost, I think I've collected everything I can possibly put on this system. Again, I'm not in any hurry to wire it all together because I don't need it now, but it's like survival food. If you want to continue, if you want to try to have a way to communicate, this is the way to approach it. And just going back a minute to uh, kind of not completely finished, but uh, semi-finished workstation here for everything. Again, four-foot LED light. LED, why? Because it's not going to drain your battery system down. Notice also my security system will be running, and that's what you're seeing, one of the cameras there from this, um, which is important. You need to know that, and, and the, it's an inexpensive security system that will allow you, if you wanted to, to view your home from your phone, and uh, it uh, you can set it up to go to the cloud in case, say, someone your house catches on fire. Somewhere there's a record in the cloud of what happened. But, uh, guys, uh, again, uh, didn't do it overnight. Been saving and uh, storing up stuff, and my wife's about to kick me out of the house. But... The important part is if you want to communicate, if you want to have some fans in the hot summer or a little 5,000 BTU air conditioner or a small refrigerator, you can do that. You can have some of these nicer things, you know, and you can, your, your clothes dryer won't work very well because of the heat, but your washing machine on these larger systems will work and you can hang your clothes out, remember, in the old days and a lot better than nothing. But again, I'll get into more detail. Oh, and by the way, on our websites, bpheadlinenews.com and bpearthwatch.com, the, we have that player, guys. And if you look just above the comments here, anytime you see this light flashing and changing colors, there's an upcoming episode. Now, tonight's show, uh, March 31st, is we're going to be an hour early, 7 o'clock. We're going to go 90 minutes. I want you to call in with any questions you have about uh, any type of survival situation you know we have a lot of survival food and things like that water filtration on our sit on our sites only the best from my patriot supply and so preparedness is the key i've always said and it was i didn't come up with it but failing to prepare is preparing to fail so just think about it and guys we still have 50 percent off this ammo can it's a it's got a, a o-ring seal in it for so it keeps anything dry but it comes with that one week of food supply in it it's all um sealed it, you can go up to 10 to 20 years on some of this it's military grade mylar very tasty food take it out mix it with some warm water and you're good to go for a week 39 bucks think about it ammo can it costs you 10 but it helps support our channel what it does, guys, it puts something in your hands that you can save your family with. My number one issue in life when it comes to bugging out is avoid the FEMA one-way food line at all co cost. I said one way because in many cases, that may be the last one you see. You need to know. You need to have food. You need to have a way to communicate via shortwave or ham radio, and uh, to stay on, on top of the game. You don't want to get in that tidal wave of immediate chaos when it hits the fan. It's a heads up, guys. Be safe. See you at 7 tonight, 7 p.m. Central. Be safe.